So at this point, we've gone through an overview of the various hook methods and helper methods and so on that are part of the search stream gang case study. And what I'd like to do is kind of evaluate it, look at the pros and cons of this particular way of implementing the code. And so we'll start first by understanding the pros and cons of the search with sequential streams class. So there's a number of benefits to this approach. One of them is that this solution uses so-called internal iterators as opposed to the external iterators that are used by collections or arrays and things like that. So if you go back and watch the video that talks about the object-oriented solution for the search stream gang case study, you'll see that we had external looping, we used conditional statements like if statements and so on, we had to allocate memory and so on. And all that stuff is now handled intrinsically or organically, as we might say, by the streams framework and the way of being able to compose everything together using internal iteration. So that's cleaner, neater, and as we'll see, also easier to optimize. Why is this helpful? It's because the internal iterators shield programmers from all kinds of implementation details of iteration. All that stuff is subsumed into the mechanisms that are provided by the streams framework. There's no control constructs explicitly obvious in the code. Those things are handled by, by things like the filter operation, which is basically an, an if statement, if you will. It's, a, it's the functional version of an if statement. And we're also, of course, working on pipelines of operations that either filter and or transform the data that's flowing in them using the fluent interface style that we've talked about before to join up all the various intermediate and terminal operators. Another way to look at this, which we've talked about a number of times, just to kind of emphasize the point once again, is a streams approach focuses on what operations to perform rather than how to perform them. Of course, there is a how, it's just that the how is nestled inside the, the streams framework. And so you can focus on the what, not the how, which is good. Also very important to realize that the, the method references and or the Lambda expressions that we pass as behaviors into the various intermediate operations like map and filter and so on are stateless and have no side effects. So that's very important. And you'll see this when we look at the parallel streams version later, all we have to do is make one little tweak or two little tweaks to the factory methods that create the stream and bingo, we go from sequential to parallel, which gives us a nice speed up in performance. So this allows us to be able to think about our program and reason about it. And, and of course, also analyze it if we wanted to use some kind of analysis tools, things like static checkers or dynamic checkers, stateless behaviors are much easier to, to think about because you don't have to worry about what the state is. And they also, of course, support the transparent optimization because you can turn it into a parallel stream with little or no effort. But of course, as is always the case, not everything is unicorns and rainbows, as I often like to say. So there are some some downsides to this solution. The most obvious downside, of course, is that the sequential version that we've implemented here can't take advantage of multi-core processors. So on my laptop, I've got eight hyper-threaded cores, which is quite a bit, and the implementation that we've got here just uses one of them. So as a consequence, you can see that the performance is, is not very good because it, it can't take advantage of all the the silicon and the transistors that have been used in modern multi-core processors to allow things to scale up and scale out. So that's a, quite a limitation. As we will see, as we get further along here, the parallel streams version gives you a big speed boost without requiring a lot of extra work, especially for the, the straightforward version we show here. So if you take a look at the difference in performance, the sequential version takes about 2000 milliseconds and then the simple parallel streams version takes about 430 uh, milliseconds. So that's a nice big speed up, which is basically linear in the number of cores. And that linear speed up, of course, happens because we are doing what's an inherently embarrassingly parallel program where you don't have any dependencies between the tasks. So that's why we get that speed up. There are ways to make things run even faster. And we'll talk about that later when we get into the concept of parallel splitterators. 
Another downside, which is, is not really the fault of, of Java, it's just that this particular example is not the most complicated example. There's only a few Java aggregate operations being used here. So we use basically map and filter and collect. But clearly there's more, there's more operations under the sun than just those. Now, the good news is by learning those operations, first of all, they're very, very, very common ones. So learning it here will help you in all other streams programming you're likely to do down the road. But the other good thing is that the knowledge we gain here for these simple methods applied to a sequential stream generalizes quite nicely to parallel streams. So this is not wasted effort. Moving from sequential to parallel is gonna reuse everything we've already done. But there are many, many other aggregate operations that are part of the Java Stream API. And you can take a look at them here at this link. There's quite a number of them. Um, we will also look at other examples later in the course when we talk about parallel streams that will examine the full range or a fuller range of operations than just the ones we've looked at here. So we'll have other examples that will tickle stuff like the flat map and, and other kinds of capabilities. And, and also, of course, you'll get a chance to, to program with some of these capabilities in some of the assignments we're gonna be doing. So that was just a quick overview, kind of taking a step back from looking at the various features and the various pieces to try to evaluate the pros and cons of this particular example. And needless to say, subsequent implementation strategies will, will go further than what we've done here.